In this video I'm going to demonstrate the four channel receiver that I'm going to be using in my RV. I originally was going to do this project with a Lipper Link receiver as you see here. This is the eight channel version. And you use this little remote here to do all the different functions. Now in the remote there are several settings for things like a vent, exterior lighting and such. But the problem is, these are all designed to work with the motor except for one channel. When they say they're designed to work for the motor, they're reversing. So, for example, channel 5 may be here, and when you push the button one way, this is positive and this is negative, and you push the button the other way, this is positive and this is negative, so it reverses the motor. Plus, these are high current outputs. So really, this is more designed for motor control and there is no latching capability that I've been able to determine for any of these channels so if you want to control lights if you connected the light to one of these you'd have to hold the button down to keep the light on but I'm not aware of an adapter that will provide the latching function for the light and this is one of my dimmers and I especially designed these dimmers to be able to use that momentary signal from here so you're gonna to have to build a bunch of these or find somebody that's designed something like this to be able to get this to work if you want to control lighting from this receiver well I made a decision early on in this project that the only motor control that I need is the awning as far as the slide outs go I don't care if they're automated or not you get to your campsite you pull them out once and then before you leave you pull them back in you're not going to be really having to bring the slide outs in and out all the time so a switch on the control panel is fine now the awning of course, the awning you're going to probably bring in and out multiple times while you're at your campsite. So I have a requirement, really, for one motor control and the rest for outlets and lights and things like that, which basically require latching. To compare the sizes, here is the receiver that I built. And this is a four-channel receiver. And it does have an expansion that I'm working on that I'll release in a couple more months that I can expand this to eight channels. But for now, I have two channels for the awning motor, a channel for a dimmer module in the living room, or as I like to call it, a salon. And I have a second dimmer for the awning lights, and this will control that as well. So yes, we have a real nice graphic style little remote transmitter here, where my system will be using something a little more simple, such as this one. However, I can give you a sneak preview of what I've been working on, and here is my universal remote and also it has graphics now it is a little larger because it's a prototype also because it's in a rubberized container so even when it's not you know it's a little bit larger but it's not a big deal and something this will do that this one will not do this will not only control these but it also I'm building an infrared transmitter in here so I can control my TV, my fireplace, and anything else that does IR. And I can control virtually any third-party relay, such as these type, as well as these 120-volt AC ones you plug in. I can control this. And I know a couple of my subscribers was interested in putting in some devices like this. And for those people I've not forgot about you, I'm going to do a mock-up on this to show you how you can connect it to your control panel. I'm just going to do it on a mock-up. I'm not going to do it in the RV itself. I just haven't done the demonstration video yet, but the information is already on my website. So if you want to go on my website, and I'll provide the link here, you can connect this to your RV. And you're going to have to build something like this if you're going to control the lights with this kind of receiver. By having this monitor, I can monitor what's going on with the wireless system from the control panel. And I'm just going to reboot it so you can see that I have a nice little cute splash screen. And then it shows the last signal. And this transmitter has four channels. We have control over the living room dimmer, the awning dimmer, and then the awning in and out motor. So if I depress one of the buttons, you see that it detected the salon dimmer and it gives me the actual number of the code that this transmitter sent. And if I try the awning dimmer, I get a different code. 
And so if I depress one side, you can see that uh, the motor turns one direction. When I let go, it tells me that this was an awning extend. And then if I depress the other button, you see the motor turns the other direction. And then it tells me uh, awning retract. And why is the channel number important? All we need is the remote, any remote, any four channel remote. And when we push the buttons here and it tells us the codes, we just put the codes in there and then that receiver will recognize the remote. In fact, I can program several remotes in here to do the same functions. And I'll actually have to probably do another video on just programming this thing because this is complex enough that I just can't get everything in one video. So in this video is just on the construction. I'll do one on programming and then I'll do another video on actually putting it in the RV. And with all my projects, I'll have a project web page where you can download the installation and build instructions, uh, build materials, and the schematic and other required information. And this is an Arduino Nano. This is the microcontroller that I'm using in this project. And one advantage of the Nano is it has a USB port here, so you can plug it directly in to the computer. My wireless remote system in my RV is kind of a distributed system, which means that I have multiple receivers, and each receiver is in a location where it's needed. So, for example, if I have a wall switch, I'm not going to use the receiver in the console. I'm going to use the receiver on the wall switch. So all the receivers collectively make into, you know, my overall system. And here's the whole little box of parts for the receiver. We have the main circuit board. Uh, we have a fairly high quality receiver. And then we have the relays for the uh, motor control for the awning plus for the dimmers. And full parts. And on my website I'll have step-by-step -step instructions on how to place all the components. Now a couple things we have to talk about on this board. One is that you have to specify two ounce copper when you order it. From OSH Park you can get one ounce or two ounce copper and what that means is that's one ounce per square foot or two ounces per square foot and two ounces of course would be twice as heavy as one ounce and it can handle more current. And then the other trick we're going to do is we're going to put some solder on these traces which will actually make the traces thicker. This will handle up to eight and a half amps so that's pretty respectable for a small board. So without further ado, we're just going to assemble this board and then uh, we'll show you what it looks like. And we pretty much got the board done. So what we want to do is flip it over and we want to put some solder on these traces. And again, this will increase the current carrying capability of the board. And this is all going to be covered up with potting compound anyway, so we don't have to worry about corrosion or anything. So what we've done is we've uploaded the code into the Nano, attach antenna, hook the motor up. So now we power it on and we get the little confirmation. And you see the green light shows that it's receiving. And then we can get the motor to run. This will be the only motor. And these other two will be the light switches. So everything seems to be working fine. Next step is I'm going to put it in the box and pot it. We have our potting box that we'll put this in. And before we put the potting compound in here, we actually want to remove everything we can, which includes removing the nano. Uh, this is the fuse that goes in there, as well as the screws that go in here. And then what I want to do is to take some of this conformal coating, pour along the base of these sockets. Make sure you don't get any in the top of the socket. I want to put some along both sides of the socket, on the inside and outside, because what happens is when we pour the potting compound, it will tend to wick up into the socket. Well, if that happens, you're not going to be able to get the parts back in. And an alternative, and I'll put the source on my website, you can use these low-profile headers. They're a little more expensive, but sometimes they're worth it. 
they don't have any way in the bottom side that the potting compound can wick up into. And if you use them, you have to use the matching male headers that fit into here because when you use these headers, the standard headers won't fit. You can't put them in. And we've already went ahead and potted this, and to save time, I'm not showing that in this video. And I've shown it several times in some of my previous videos that I've done on these construction projects. So I guess as an incentive for you to watch some of the other videos, then if you want to see how the potting is done, you may want to look at those. And at this point, I'm going to assemble the display unit. And the display unit uses one of these little 096 OLEDs. And uh, it's a little display unit. It's 128 pixels by 64 pixels. And these are monochrome ones. You don't really want to do a color one for this because uh, the Nano isn't that powerful. When you buy these, you can buy them uh, in white and blue, and then you can buy a special one that has the first two rows yellow, and then the last uh, six rows blue. So, you know, you can get different variations. And you can see here it says VCC, which is 5 volts, ground, SCL, and SDA. And if you look at this one, this is a little bit different. This has ground first, then VCC, and then SCL and SDA is in the same two positions. So when you buy these, you're going to find some that have the 5 volt positive and ground reversed. And on this circuit board on the side, we have some little programming tabs. This one says VCC, this says ground. These little pads will allow you to adapt this board to the various different wiring schemes of these little display units. And on the back side, this is just a six pin header that just goes in there like that. And that's the only thing that goes on that side. And the OLED display just goes on like here, like that. And I wouldn't solder this until we assemble the thing completely. And so we have some standoffs here. And, and these are countersunk for 2 millimeters, so you want to have some 2 millimeter hardware. And again, the uh, project webpage on the website will have the sources. These pins can stick out a little bit. You're going to want to cut these pins down so that they lie below this little uh, display. And then we have our USB extension. And this will just fit in there, slide in there like that. And these are actually 2.5 millimeter. So again, you know, you're going to want to probably pick up some hardware. Uh, and it's usually the cheapest if you buy like an assortment. And then once you get the thing fully assembled, then you can push the OLED display up from behind and then solder the four pins. And that way that you'll be sure that this display is flush. And then it's just a matter of taking the ribbon cable. And then these two pieces go on to the remote receiver. The USB cable plugs in the USB port. Remember, this is going to be inside the cabinet. So it's going to be hard to do any programming changes. And with this USB extension basically here, then we can plug a computer in while this is installed behind the cabinet and make any updates we need to make. And then, of course, this... Uh, other side simply plugs in. We'll turn the power on. There we go. And when the weather gets a little bit nicer, I'll produce a video on installing it in my RV.